Rockma International Academy, the center of excellence. When I came to the school in 2019, that was a hit. I didn't really have much, you know, much to expect. I didn't really have many expectations for myself, but the one thing that I knew was that I wanted to be first. Reason being, where I did year seven, I was constantly second, third, second, third, second, third. First, I was taking first place. It was my friend, but I wasn't very happy about it. Coming here, I just wanted that overall bit of clarity. So when the CA came around, the very first year I ever wrote to Open International Academy, I got what I wanted. I got the first place. And I thought it would give me that, you know, that excitement, that fulfillment, that satisfaction. And it did to an extent, but there's so much more to life. And that's what I've come to talk about today. The number one ingredient that I have for an extraordinary life is find your why. Can I have the first slide, please? Find your why. What is this little girl doing? What is she doing? Thank you, she's brushing her teeth. Now, I'll be honest with you, is there anybody that came out to dinner that brush the teeth? Or your family, we're not going to judge you. Is there anybody? I didn't think so. But why did you brush your teeth? Why go there? Did anybody push you and say, go and brush your teeth, right now, don't brush them, slap it. No. But you just stood up and brushed your teeth. So why? Why did you do that? Because you know the importance. You know that if you don't brush your teeth, your mouth is going to sink and nobody wants to talk to you, right? So you brush your teeth. Miles Monroe said that whenever the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So once you find your why, you don't know what they're about. Should I? Should I not? You already know the importance, so you just go ahead and do it. So find your why. And for a long period of my life, I didn't know what my why was. But in four plus years I've been here, I've come to conclude that my why is for his glory. Romans 14 verse 8 to 8, the NIV version says, If we live, we live for him. If we live, we live for him. So that's where I got my wife from, and I hope you find yours. Number two, the second thing I want to talk about is learn as a lifestyle. Learn as a lifestyle. Learning is something you can never get to know from. Learning takes humility. Learning takes inquisitiveness. Learning takes time. And when it comes to learning, there's no limits. I consider myself a lifelong learner. And I don't call myself a learner because I go to school every day. I call myself a learner because there's so much I don't know and there's so much I want to know. So many people have the mentality that, you know, you're better than someone else or you can't, you can't possibly get anything from this particular person because you're better than them. We have this group of um, people in this uh, the non-academic staff, and that can include that includes operatives and janitors and kitchen staff and many other people. And you may say, okay, yes, they're at the bottom of the organogram, the you know the body of the soul. But what if I told you that so many of the things that have made me today, I was taught by the help of the Holy Spirit from this group of people. I mean, there are operatives that have taught me what no book has taught me. There are janitors that have told me, have, have answered questions that I've never been able to answer in my life. There are critics that, that have helped me in the challenges that I've faced that I couldn't even tell best friends, I couldn't even tell teachers, I couldn't even tell anyone else. So be willing to learn. The first time I learned how to play the drum, just a little bit, was from me an eight boy. I saw him playing and I was like, wow, oh, you're really talented, just can you teach me something? And so like, I'm sorry, because I've been playing drum from nowhere. From me an eight boy. You may say, oh, it's my junior, why would you be big to yourself like that? But no, you can learn anything from anybody. So be humble enough to learn. Be humble enough to ask questions. Be humble enough to observe. There's no end to learning. And those who learn, they go really, really far. Something I call, the lift is broken. So roll up your sleeves and take the stairs. The elevator is broken and it's not going to be repaired. So roll up your sleeves and take the stairs. 
Sono fidati al suo figlio. What do I mean by that? Responsibility. One day at a time. Don't take responsibility. Don't accept responsibility. Package responsibility in a Ghana muscle bag and carry it in your head for the rest of your life every single day. Responsibility is the bedrock of anyone that wants to be great in life. The number one thing that you can do is to start by saying, you know what, it's me. It's my job. There's this is illustration that Papa usually gives. For example, I don't do very well in a test. Maybe I got a 5 over 10 or something, and I'm really disappointed about it. I can be like, you're the reason why I didn't do well. Maybe I'm pointing at my teacher. Teacher, you didn't teach me well. Um, we didn't have enough classes. I didn't understand. It's your fault. Or I can say, oh, God, it's you. This dog is pointing at God. I'm like, God, you didn't teach me. I asked you to give me understanding. You didn't give it to me. Teacher, God, teacher, God. All this time, you see these three fingers? Who are they pointing to? Who are they pointing to? Exactly. So it's in your hands. There's a quote um, a great astrologer gave that said, it's not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. So whatever it is that you desire to achieve, whether you're a student, whether you're a learner in this school, a learner in another school, whether you're a career person, a businessman, a minister of the gospel, it's up to you to do what needs to be done to get to where you want to go. There's this quote that the Holy Spirit gave me that I always share with people, and it's, you must be willing to do what no one else is willing to do if you want to get the results that no one else is willing to get. You see that kind of that's called carry it. It may not be easy, but it's worth it. Celebrate other people's successes. I'm privileged to know the wonderful personalities of Shekina Ayanaso and Michael Allah. And if those names are unfamiliar to you, let me tell you who they are. Shakina was the last boy in Victoria in the set of 2023, and Michael was the last head boy in the set of 2023. Now, Shakina has always been the top of his class. He has always been getting first, doing well in all these exams, all the CAs, everything, coming out on top. And there's something I noticed about Michael that I didn't really understand at first. Michael is Shakina's cheerleader. Michael celebrates checking as if he's celebrating himself. Let me give you an illustration. If you've ever watched one of those um, American high school movies where there's like a football team and they're going out for a game, then they're like, oh, these people people in the side called cheerleaders. You've seen, them, you've seen them before, right? What do they do? Anytime the team is maybe not doing well, or anytime the team is doing exceptionally well and they score or whatever, they start shouting and screaming and jumping and dancing as if they're the ones playing the game. high five or something and move on. But since she was you know, chanting and jumping and demonstrating, not for themselves, but for someone else. We should all be cheerleaders. You know why? Whatever you celebrate, you are child. I'm not the one that said it, I learned that from God. Whatever you celebrate, you are child. Shaking a success, I so love it. I so love it. And ever since I started loving it, I started seeing it in my own life. You see, jealousy. Jealousy is like a cancer. It's in Proverbs. Imagine somebody trying to, you know those escalators at the mall? Imagine the one goes up, one goes down. Imagine you see somebody trying to go up the down escalator, like trying to ascend the descending escalator. You look at the person and think they're crazy, right? But that's what many of us are doing. Because that's what your life looks like when you're walking in jealousy. Instead of being jealous of someone, celebrate them and find out how did you do it. You can benefit from someone else's success, but you have to celebrate it first. You can't have a virtue, you can't draw insight from someone who despise. Whether that person is your classmate, your senior, your junior, your boss, your co-worker, your employer, whoever. Celebrate all their successes and you will find your way to it. Give it a try. Remember where your income comes from. 
Someone to one verse one says, I look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, the maker of heaven. And I'd be a liar to stand here before you today and tell you that everything that you hear my name for, everything that you see me celebrated for, came out only because of hard work, because it didn't. Jesus said, without me, you can't do nothing. And I've come to accept that. Because I know that everything I do, it only produces when it's blessed by him. When Papa spoke about the Holy Spirit, that was the first time in my life I encountered the Holy Spirit. That was the first time in February 2020 that I attended. He said that the Holy Spirit is your help. He's the one that will take your work and turn it into something new. He's the one that will take you from where you are to where you never thought you could be. And I'm proof of that. Because the Holy Spirit is without a doubt the source of my success. And I believe that we are all believers here. But if you are not, I came to tell you that everything starts the moment you submit to God. And then when you begin to work with the Holy Spirit. So if you don't mind, I'd like to just give you that opportunity. You know, even if you think you have given your life to Christ, even if you think that you've been going to church and everything, and maybe there's a time in your life where you went back and you didn't get back on the right track. The Holy Spirit will do things for me that no other man can do. And I'm a testimony of that. When I wrote SAT a few months ago, that was last year in June, I was not feeling as if my preparation was going to give me a 1 6 at all. I was not thinking of going to give me up to a 1000. Because I just felt so unsure. What is this strange exam that they call SAT in from America? What if it's hard and can I do it? Can I not do it? But I tried. I tried. I tried my best. And I depended on the Holy Spirit helped me. You see, I yes, yes, I got 8.0 overnight. We used how many days to prepare for that exam? It wasn't something that was looking so sure. But it came out. It came out at the end of the day. Because when your effort combines with God's grace, amazing things happen. I just hear saying something that still blows my mind to today. The fact that I was even talking about to join Gary still blows my mind. Because when I registered for my subjects, we have a lot of science talk. There was a lot of discouragement. There was a lot of doubt. But you know what we say? I can do all things through Christ and show me So before I round off with this, anyone here that feels uncomfortable about the salvation thing and you're not sure that you are going to meet with Jesus when you know, judgment day comes, I want you to know that He is the beginning of everything. And if you can just put some in him, you will see amazing things happen. What has happened in my life so far is it is of the grace of God. And how to use the grace of God and it's working for me. So can we just bow our heads for 30 seconds? If there's anyone here that wants to give their life to Christ, wants to submit to the authority of the Holy Spirit, I want you to just say this after me to yourself. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be your child. And I submit myself to you. I believe you died, and I believe you lived. And I want to do this life with you. Help me to live a life that will please you. And this day, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, precious Father, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. And if you permit me to say, as Samson said in his song, this grace of God that I'm enjoying, I'm carrying in my name, sure, it will work. Thank you. Okma International Academy, the center of excellence.